chapter 14 energy method let's review an example in strain energy but this time due to shear in beams mm -hmm. so we want we have two beams one is cantilever with the length of L with concentrated load apply at free end and the other is two simple support beam handling a concentrated load at this at its center so we want to see what is the ratio of of a uh, strain energy but this time due to shear in in beam one to beam two so example calculate the ratio of strain energy due to shear in beam one to beam two so that's u tau one mm -hmm, which is here and the other is u tau 2 which is for the second b and we want to calculate this ratio mm -hmm. so first of all the reaction at a for the first beam is p which is cancelling the only concentrated load or only vertical load at the free end and if you cut it through by a length of x from free end it just gives you vx equal to v shear at a distance of x from the free end is equal to p and we also know from from a strain energy calculation that's in shear that which is in shear is integration of zero to l v squared over two times g times cross-sectional area times dx if that's the case u for scenario one is zero to l p squared because that's all v over 2 g a dx so integration of 0 to l dx goes to l so that's a p squared l over 2 g a for the scenario one and if we want to solve it for for a second condition which is a two simple support beam with only a concentrated load applied as at it at its center we want to calculate u tau 2 mm -hmm. we do know each of the supports here because due to symmetry they, they carry the same equal and half of the weight of half of the load of p and if you cut the section through by a distance of x it just gives you vx equal to p over q or a half of p so again u is equal to integration of v squared over 2 g a times dx mm -hmm. and if you calculate u2 but this time be careful one time for the half to the center and one time for the other half so that's a integration of from 0 to l over 2 to the centroid because that's a symmetric structure p over 2 squared over 2 g a then dx so it just give you these two cancel out by these two that's p squared over 4 times l over 2 so that goes by p squared l over 4 times the previous value so this is if you remember this is u1 so u2 is just a one fourth of a quarter of u1 and if you do the math it just gives you a u1 is equal to p squared times l over 2 g a and u2 is equal to p squared l over 4 times 2 g a so you can easily see u1 is 4 times bigger of in comparison to u2 so if you divide the two shear strain over each other it just gives you u1 is 4 times bigger than u tau 2 and that gives us a strain energy in in beam bond due to shear due to shear is is a four times greater than a strain energy in beam two and and that's a interesting fact we already know that in rectangular beam in rectangular beam relative error is less than almost 0.9 h over l squared if the effect of shear is neglected if we ignore the effect of shear it's nothing going to happen in the problem it means if h over l h over l 
is, is a smaller than one tenth, which is most of the case, that's the case. And that's in that terms, error is less than 0.9%. So we can how easily see how small that number is and that's close to zero, we can neglect it. So that's why in engineering problem, effect of shear is almost neglected in calculation of a strain energy. Thank you. Share your comment and, and just give me your valuable feedbacks on, on these uh, videos of, of energy methods. Thank you.